Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Rigmotech RS500 Simrig build that I've been working on over the past few videos. We're going to talk about the good things, the bad things, and we'll even answer some questions that you've had in the comments. Let's kick things off by talking about the Thrustmaster gear. The steering wheel is the T300 RS GT from Thrustmaster. Um, I don't have any other comparisons for this wheel because this is the first real wheel that I've purchased, but I have to say after almost two years now of using it, it's been great. I have zero complaints with it, um, especially for somebody who is starting off with uh, sim racing. It's definitely one of the more affordable wheels and it's, it's treated me great. The same thing goes for the TH8A shifter and the T3PA Pro pedal set also from Thrustmaster. Again, I don't have a comparison for any of these, but they have been absolutely awesome the entire time I've been using them. The handbrake that I chose was just a, a cheap budget Amazon uh, purchase that pretty much only works on PC, and honestly, it's really not that good. Um, I think I spent about $100 on it, and honestly, I wish I would have put that money towards a, a better handbrake. It has random issues where sometimes you need to uh, unplug it and plug it back in after a reboot, so that can be kind of annoying. Um, it can't be used on consoles, like I said, so that's a little bit um, annoying if you're trying to uh, use uh, your Xbox or your PlayStation 4 with your sim rig. And for some reason, the electronics on it just don't really work that great. Sometimes it engages too early, and sometimes it doesn't engage early enough, so um, unless you want to tweak your settings in every single game to get it just right, um, if that's even an option. Again, it's just kind of a hassle to deal with. So let's talk about the sim rig and the build process and everything that kind of surrounds that. The main thing that I can say about uh, building a wooden rig is just take your time. Um, I spent a lot of time on this because I am not good at woodworking. Um, you know, I've never really had like a big woodworking project and so I just took my time went slow, and for the most part everything turned out good, but I could definitely tell when I was rushing in certain areas that the, the outcome wasn't exactly what I wanted. In the end, the product turned out really well, and I'm very happy with it. If you're gonna build this rig, the one thing I would recommend is put everything together, build the cockpit, get everything set up the way you want it, and this is before you, before you finish it, so before you put any like carpet on it, any paint, anything like that. Um, get everything set up, set up all your electronics on it, and play around with it for a while and make sure that it is exactly what you want. Um, you might want to adjust your seat in different directions, you might want to um, you know, mount a TV or mount your wheel or something slightly different, so it's, it's good to uh, play around with that and have an idea of what you're going to do before you actually finish it. That way you don't have to you know, go back and do it later. On my rig you've seen the NRG racing seat that I'm using. It looks really, really cool with this simulator. The problem is, it's not very comfortable. It's, it's not meant for long sessions, um, which makes sense if you're putting it in a, in a car that you're planning to use at a track or something like that. Um, you're probably not going to be in it for a few hours at a time. Depending on the type of racing, it is entirely possible that you could, but I will just say that it is not very comfortable. Uh, my recommendation for a seat would be to uh, go to a junkyard, get an actual seat out of a car. Usually you can find seats for uh, way less than that seat because it was like $200. Um, it's going to be more comfortable and you can probably find something that looks really nice. So I'd highly recommend that, especially if you're planning to do longer sessions in your racing simulator. In terms of doing a budget build, uh, one site or app that I would recommend is Slick Deals. You can uh, use it to find big discounts on your gear. You can set up alerts so that if a wheel or pedal set or whatever you're looking for goes on sale, you'll get an alert. Um, so I highly recommend that. Uh, another thing that you could, should also be looking for is um, if you want to buy lumber uh, or really any material to build your sim rig, look for store discounts. So, you know, in the US, like Lowe's and Home Depot are really like two of the biggest uh, home improvement stores. So. Um, if you plan to buy lumber from those places, keep an eye out for like 10, 20, or even 25% off uh, store discounts. That way um, you can purchase everything all in one shop and get a 25% discount on it. The last piece of advice that I would have is high quality tools. And, and I'm not saying go out and buy a bunch of high quality tools just for this build. Um, what I'm saying is like, you'll, you'll notice in my price breakdown, which is going to be a separate video that um, I did purchase some stuff from Harbor Freight and for the most part it worked out really well. 
However, the jigsaw I was using was not great, and I'll kind of talk about that in a, in a minute here with uh, some issues that I ran into with this build. I probably scared you a little bit by saying the issues that I ran into with the build, but really the, the main issue I had was with the jigsaw. Uh, for some reason, whether it was on the uh, aluminum or the wood, just the, the blade was always bouncing, like no matter what speed I was running it at. Um, brand new blades, didn't want to cut. Um, I just wish I had a, a better jigsaw when I was when I was doing the build. That was probably like the biggest issue that I had. That being said, there are some other tidbits, um, maybe advice or just things that you should know uh, before getting into something like this. If you've never used a countersink bit before, I would definitely get some practice on a scrap board. Um, you can probably just do it right on the, the simulator, but if you are a perfectionist, definitely uh, go with a scrap piece of wood and just give it a try, uh, you know, figure out how far in you need to go and, um, you know, what's gonna work best for uh, however you're building your sim rig. If you're planning to put uh, carpet on your simulator like I did, uh, one thing I'll say is that if you're gonna use carpet glue, don't overdo it with the carpet glue. Um, I do have a couple of small spots that aren't very noticeable, like, other people probably aren't going to notice it, but because I built it, I'm going to notice it. Um, where I used a little bit too much and it kind of seeped through the carpet, so just be careful with that. You, you want to be thorough, but you also don't want to overdo it. Lastly, if you plan on using vinyl, just know that it took forever to wrap this thing. Um, it, it just took a long time, and it's because you're trying to make sure all the bubbles are out, you're using um, a heat gun around it just to make sure that everything is sticking correctly to the MDF and uh, there's a lot of cutting involved. So just know that um, you know once you get to that step, it is going to take you a while. All right, so now we're at the point where I'm going to answer questions that I've had in the comments or in the sim racing group on Facebook um, or just from friends in general. So starting off with a question that I've actually just seen in multiple places uh, when doing my research for the RS500 build, and that is how long does it take to build? If you're building just the cockpit, um, so in other words, just the uh, wooden cockpit, nothing else fancy, I would say you could probably do it in a day. Um, assuming that you had everything you need prepped and ready to go, you know, starting in the morning, finishing it at night, you could probably get it all done in one day. When it comes to like all the finishing and, um, you know, just going back and sanding and doing all the other stuff uh, to really make it something like a, a nice product that you can be proud of, I would give it a couple days, um, especially if you're planning to use paint or you know, anything that has to dry, like you just have to build in that time for it. So I would say maybe two solid weekends um, in order to uh, complete the whole thing, at least to the point where like I have mine. All right, so now let's answer questions from either the YouTube comments or from Facebook or just from other people that um, have asked me about these things. Um, a lot of people wanna know the dimensions of the cockpit. Um, and because there are a bunch of different dimensions I'm going to give you right now, I'm just going to read it directly off the script because I think that will be the easiest way to do this. So the base cockpit, so just what you're getting from uh, Rigmotec, um, is 58 inches front to back, um, 20.5 inches wide without the shifter console attached, um, otherwise it's 25.5 inches um, wide with the console attached. Um, and it is 26 inches high, and uh, that's um, just to the board that's uh, right above the uh, right above the wheel deck. Um, if you're wondering specifically about the um, the dimensions of my cockpit with the modifications that I've made, um, that is going to be 66 inches front to back, and that's with um, the the layout of the racing seat. So the racing seat is tilted back a little bit. Um, and it does extend a little bit back further than the, um, than the base platform. The uh, console, I went a little extra wide with it, that way I could um, have a spot to mount the, the handbrake. And so um, the width on my rig is 28.5 inches. Because I built the custom TV mount for this rig, uh, mine actually ends up being about 48 inches tall. And uh, with the TV mounted on there, which is a 43 inch TV and just with the the height that's on there, um, and the overall height with the TV on there is 50.5 inches. All right, now that we got all the measurements out of the way, um, I got an interesting question that um, I can't really answer, but I can give you some info about it. Um, I was asked, how heavy is it? And that's a hard question to answer because uh, one, I don't know the exact weight. Um, two, I can tell you it is heavy. <laughs> 
And um, what I'll say is if you don't have casters on the bottom um, or some way to like slide it around, I would recommend having two people involved uh, if you actually need to like, you know, pick it up and move it because it is very heavy, especially after you get the uh, equipment installed. Um, I will say that like during the build process when it was like just the cockpit, um, you know, it was still pretty heavy, but um, basically what I did is, you know, built the platform and move the platform to wherever I wanted it or close to wherever I wanted it. And then um, took the MDF pieces and assembled it in that spot. So I really didn't have to do a whole lot of moving, but if you do have to move it, I would recommend having uh, two people involved. The last question that I've gotten is how sturdy is it? And it is very sturdy. Like, I, I don't know how to put it in any other words except for saying that like, like none of the the pieces flex even the the upright for the tv even though it's only just a, a piece of three quarter inch mdf like if i put some force on it i will flex it but when you're driving and stuff like that um you know it's just the side to side motion it's not moving so um it is absolutely solid um and the the overall like build quality the way that uh, rick motek has you put you put this thing together it is just overall a solid rig no flex um it's just it's so good all right, everybody. Well, that is it for this video. Um, stay tuned for the cost breakdown of the uh, sim rig, where I go into depth on everything that I purchased for this. That's including, you know, materials, tools, just every little uh, bit that went into this. Um, there's a cost breakdown for it, so we'll be going through that. Um, if you like this video or any of my other videos, um, it means the world to me if you subscribe or uh, hit that like button. Definitely appreciate that. If you have any questions on anything, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, or even uh, come by Twitch where I'm streaming every Tuesday and Friday. Um, otherwise, I guess we'll uh, see you in the next one.